Good morning people, it's Monday, it's just after lunchtime, and I am on with finishing the bender. Now I've got this rather grotty thing that was sent to the post cleaned up now and it looks a lot better, and I have to take 2.7mm out of there. So I've got to think of a way of doing it and think of a machine to set it up on to get 2.7 mil out. Now I've got various, uh, I've got a boring head and I've got a mill which I've fairly recently got a vertical head for, I've got a horizontal mill which I've now got a vertical head for, uh, but I've never set, I've never set it all up and I was looking for a time when I had spare time when I could at a leisurely pace put it all together and set it up and use it now it could be that this is the time to do that because if I put a machine vise on the table I can put that straight in a machine vise I can level it up with a square until it's flat across the top and just drop a boring bar into there and I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it to be honest uh, I don't fancy using a boring bar in my drill stand, which is the way some people do it, uh, when there's a very little to come out, there's only 2.7mm to come out, but I suppose it's quite a lot really. I haven't had a look through my drills yet to see if I've got anything that big. Uh, my feeling is I'm going to jump straight across this size and go from bigger than this to smaller than this, but never mind. So there's another thing. Right, The other thing I have to do is to uh, turn up an adapter for the small ones and then what I thought I would do was start here and just stick a little piece of tube with a bolt welded in the end that they will fit over like that so that you can just drop them straight onto them and, uh, and arrange them like that from one end to the other. That's right, because that, that one's inch, and that one's inch and a quarter, and the next one's inch and a half, and the huge one is two inch. Right? So, I also have to look at that, but that's an easy job. Uh, provided I'm making the adapter is easy, provided I've got a piece of bar big enough. Uh, I might end up fabricating something. Uh, by wrapping a piece of strip round something 35mm, even the end of the ram would do it, and uh, and welding it, and then putting a piece of bar, smaller bar on the end of it. It was chilly this morning, and so I've lit the fire. It's going. It's up to 71 degrees. Uh, that's as warm as it needs to be, to be honest. It doesn't need to be much at all. It's lovely and warm in here without being too hot and we've got nice warm air blowing out of the ducted system here so we're uh, we're bathed in luxury in this workshop right I'm gonna crack on set something up uh, have a look through my drills and see what I've got and I'll bring you back when I'm doing something interesting okay bye for now right folks here we go it's two o'clock and I have decided that I'm going to put, try this head on the uh, on the horizontal mill to convert it to vertical and uh, the first thing I came across is the nice little uh, dowel pin that uh, fits there doesn't fit there so it looks like some engineering is coming on and I think that might need a gasket as well, but I've got the manual, so I'm going to look up in the manual and see if there's a gasket on there as well, because this actually has oil in it. So there you go. So we're going to crack on and see if we can get somewhere. I've got the calipers, and I'm going to set about measuring this little hole to see what we can see. Okay, I'll bring you back when something else is going on. Bye now. Right, folks. What we've basically got 
is that this I'm pretty sure is an 11 mil pin it comes out at exactly 11 mil that hole in there is 10.6 which doesn't make any sense because I know that this is a metric machine because it's got metric dials in it however it wouldn't be beyond Harrison to have made a machine the same for years and years and years and turned it into a metric machine by the fitting of different lead screws and different dials so it is possible that this head is, is off a much earlier machine uh, but it doesn't seem to make any sense at all to me anyway I'm going to have a look at the man. I've got the book of words out I'm going to have a read of the manual and see if I can't make any sense of it because it looks to me like uh, this should bolt straight on this should go straight on and it doesn't which is weird I can't understand why that doesn't fit but it definitely doesn't fit this definitely that definitely comes out at 10.66 and this measures at 11 unless it's a taper pin uh, designed to align it but there you go right I'll crack on and bring you back when there's something else to tell you bye for now the same problems are made to be overcome I've just found this bolt which fits the thread this is the drive gear out of the uh, vertical head the uh, drawbar look at that beautiful drawbar the drawbar off the Harrison this one is a metric this is a, a 12 by 175 this however is a 13 TPI uh, UNC which I've found a bolt to fit it and I found uh, I've got the number of TPI on the thread gauge and I've looked it up in my tables and that is a half inch UNC so I need to get or make a half inch UNC drawbar and as winter's coming and tractors aren't pressing I'm going to crack on with this and get that working and then I know I've got a horizontal, a vertical mill as well as a horizontal mill uh, I have another vertical mill but that needs a lot of work doing to it although I want to crack on with that as well get all these little jobs cleared up right so we found the thread we found a bolt the next thing is do I have a uh, a die it's doubtful I could single point it on the lathe of course uh, that might be the way to do it right I'll bring you back when I've made a decision bye for now good morning people it's Tuesday the heating's on again although it's not quite as cold as it was yesterday and I've just been looking at various other uh, BT30 uh, fittings I've got that need drawbars so we've got two Whitworth another metric and this one which is a UNC uh, I've also got another UNC somewhere was that UNC? no that's metric uh, oh the I've uh, got a very nice little Lushington boring head here and uh, I think that turned out to be UNC as well so there you go so what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to make another drawbar out of that piece of steel uh, I'm going to have to single point a half inch UNC thread on that which is a 60 degree uh, flank angle thread and then I'm going to have to make up another piece another fitment to go on that end like that and weld it on uh, it's actually this, this bar really is the perfect size because it's just over that size there so I can make that so I'm going to crack on with that uh, what else I've got to turn that I'm, I'm going to turn that uh, that dowel peg down uh, until it fits the machine so that it fits the machine on the head uh, so it's going to be a dual size but only just dual size it it's only needs a tiny bit off it seems crazy that uh, Right, so I'm going to crack on with that on the lathe. Anything else happened? No, I don't think it has. I think we're all good and together. So I'll crack on with that. 
and then we'll uh, we'll make new draw bars as we need to for fitting various things because of course a lot of these I mean both the horizontal horizontal and the vertical take the 30 taper uh, I'm just gonna have to watch out for different draw bar threads uh, I was thinking of making a draw bar with an interchangeable thread on the end so that I could take one thread out and put another one in but it's fairly easy to make draw bars and what I really need is some, I mean if I had a length of if I had a length of UNC threaded rod uh, I would have just used that unfortunately I haven't neither have I got a half inch UNC uh, die or a tap so it's a bit awkward but I'm going to go ahead with what I've got I'm going to single point a UNC thread on the end of that and then we'll make that up so I'm going to crack on with that now and I'll bring you back when I've done it or at least when it's getting interesting bye for now uh, can you see that what a fascinating chatter pattern that is, right? I've just knocked this down from three quarters of an inch to a half inch, right, which is the size for cutting the thread. And to finish it off, uh, just to get it down to a half inch bang on, I took off a one and a half thou aside uh, final cut, and that pattern appeared. Up until that I've been getting a perfectly smooth uh, finish, really good finish, really pleasing finish, no problem at all. But that bloody pattern appeared, can you believe it? Oh well, whatever, there you go. Right, I'm going to, uh, that's down to size for the thread, I'm going to cut the gutter for the thread and then I'm going to uh, get the whole thing out, I've put a centre in that end, I'm going to get the whole thing out. Uh, to full length then and I'm going to take the excess diameter off it uh, and get it down to size probably turn the piece at the end then cut the thread so it's just after 12 o'clock and we're cracking up ok I'll bring you back later and show you some more bye now well folks I've got sidetracked again sidetracked from the pipe bender into the milling machine into cutting a UNC half inch thread 13 TPI and I've realised that I am actually a bit stuffed for a tool steel uh, or, or not a piece of tool, I could grind a piece of tool steel I've ground a piece of tool steel, I've cut a thread with it uh, it was okay, it fits but it doesn't fit very well and then I realised I've got a 30 degree cutter here which I'm going to try and do another thread with but time is rushing on and it's four o'clock and I'm not getting anywhere but I am enjoying myself because it's not often that I get to play with my machines and I've wanted to put this vertical head on for some long time so it's best to plough on through and get it done and once it's done I can swap it whenever I want so yes I've got sidetracked but never mind it's autumn now the tractor's not going to be wanted till spring, so there's no rush. Yeah, I, am a, I am a character for getting sidetracked. Look at this. Look at that, eh? Isn't that nice? Just keeping me nice and warm. Right, chaps, I'm going to have a go at cutting this thread. And I'll bring you back again if I'm successful. If I'm not successful, I might just get embarrassed and go home. Bye now. Good morning, folks. It's Wednesday, about 12.30. We've had a late start this morning due to taking number two daughter to Beverly to have her braces removed from her now corrected teeth. Now, I have come to a conclusion that the uh, Harrison vertical head the uh, the transfer gear in it which bolts into the horizontal uh, arbor fitting has got a slightly tight thread in it because I found that the the Lushington the lovely Lushington boring head 
is uh, is also half inch UNC, and that is a perfect fit in there. So, last night on eBay, I bought some uh, jolly old Banggood threading tools uh, and inserts, and I've also managed to drop on uh, on eBay a used uh, half inch. 13 TPI UNC die and a tap so I'll be equipped then I'll be able to check the thread in the uh, transfer gear with the with the tap and I'll be able to cut the thread or neaten the thread up with the die because at the moment what I do when I'm threading on the lathe if I've got to make a thread and it's a critical and I don't want to screw it up what I do is I chuck in a piece of Chuck in a piece of aluminium scrap bar, turn it down to the uh, external diameter of the thread, which in this case is half an inch, 0.5. Right, and then I cut the thread. Usually, it has to be said, with a little tiny TCT thread cutter that I've got. Uh, look at the shit on there. Which, cover, which, which does the job very neatly. I've cut lots of Whitworth threads. But, of course, UNC is a 60 degree flank angle. So, what I've got here is a little TCT with a 60 degree flank angle on it but it isn't actually designed for thread cutting right and it's not making a very good job the only other option is for me to grind up a piece of uh, tool steel a piece of uh, high speed steel into a shape and that's what I might end up doing uh, or at least I'm going to have a go at because I've never done it before I mean let's, let's not mess about uh, I don't uh, I'm not. I am not a precision engineer. I'm not even a rough engineer. Uh, I'm a very imprecise engineer. And actually, looking at that tip, it might be blunt. It might be blunt. It might want changing around. But I've got a spare one of those anyway. Uh, but it's not designed for thread cutting. It's the right angle. It's got a nice back angle on it, and it's got plenty of clearance on it. But it's not designed for thread cutting, right? And therefore, it, it is probably a bit on the large side but it is cutting a thread and the uh, they do start on it uh, they do go on to it but it, it, it doesn't go on to it nicely and obviously on the steel end which I've got here which I have, which I have prepared I want to get a nice thread on there now I could just wait till the die comes uh, and use the die but we shall see if I can get this to work properly. If I can either grind up a piece of uh, high-speed steel, or uh, this is this is one job leading to another, right? What I need in order to grind up a piece of tool steel, uh, high-speed steel, accurately, is to get my grinder going, right? Which needs it's all finished, it's all rebuilt. It just wants to start on the electric wiring on it. So we've now gone from a simple job on the uh, on the bending ram on the on the sorry on the bending former we've gone to the lathe first to the milling machine to fit the vertical head then to the lathe to make a drawbar for the milling machine and now we need to cut a thread and it's all it's all adding up so what I've done is I've ordered these thread cutting tools from Banggood which should make it quicker to do this job anyway right but we're gonna we're gonna see I shall when they all come I shall be fully equipped with internal and external thread cutting insert tooling right uh, and in the meantime I'm looking at uh, all sorts of other ways I've got various I've got various little things I've got this which is a lovely little set which is made by a company called Kennet and uh, I can't get it open. And what this is is a, is a holder with lots of little inserts that go in it. It's two problems with it. I can't get the handle screw out of there because this is settable, slides either way, and I don't see why it has to do that. Right, but anyway, I can't get it out, but I, I could get it out if I spent the time on it. And then it's got all these inserts. The only problem is 
these inserts are the, for the fine threads they're for the 18s the 16s the 14s the 12s and then it's got two 11s for Whitworth right so I've got all the inserts for it but I haven't got one for UNC right I haven't got a 13 TPI one for UNC so I can't use that right that's a very interesting little tool which I paid next to nothing for uh, I think it came from a junk shop I think it might have come from eBay I'm not sure but I paid next to nothing for it it was very cheap uh, but it's a matter of it's, if you want to do these jobs it's a matter of being tooled up and whilst I've got lots of miscellaneous tooling which is that the one yeah you see that's that's a can you see that that is a 55 degree thread cutting tool with a tiny little tungsten carbide tip on the end that makes brilliant whip with threads brilliant 55 degree threads I can do BSF with it it's fine but it's 55 degrees and UNC is 60 degrees and to grind a proper 60 degree point and I know there'll be people out there that'll laugh at me and say well I'll just do it behind and, and they always fit well you're quite right but I haven't got the right type of grinder my grinder in there sits on the bench it's not even screwed down I need to get this grinder going to be able to grind tool steel to a reasonable degree of accuracy because this has got the angle plates on it and I can set the table to an angle and grind from there I can also it's also got t-slots in which means I can clamp a piece down at a set angle and get a reasonable go at it but I need to get it going it's like all these jobs get done as fast as I can get them done but there's only me so I'm gonna crack on do a bit more but first I'm gonna have a cup of tea I've done some tidying up this morning I've done some tidying up I did get here about half past eleven and I've tied it up under the bench because I realised that on top of that shelf there which is now cleared down uh, had been a container of oil uh, of uh, used vegetable oil waste vegetable oil and uh, it had split and it had run out over the bench over the top of, sorry over the top of the shelf and made a right bloody mess so what I did first thing was I came in and I thought god what's that horrible smell of polymerized oil and it was that shelf so I've cleared it down I've got some of the stuff off it and put it under the bench so I've tied it up under the bench as well and gradually bit by bit we get better and better okay bye now well folks my big tidy up continued uh, I've put a new point on that right and I'm gonna try I've just I've just found a piece of half inch steel now and I'm gonna try and uh, see if I can single point a thread on this this is a piece of scrap it doesn't matter but I've also found in my collection of tools a very nice uh, that cuts from right to left so it's a right hand tool a uh, very nice right hand uh, insert piece of insert tooling and uh, it's got a good insert in it so I've been using that and it's it's really good it's the first time I've used insert tooling really uh, but because I can't sharpen any uh, high speed steel at the moment I'm just going to try it out and see see what it's like I know the inserts are expensive but uh, to hell with it to hell with it so tomorrow I shall knock that down I shall try and turn that thread I shall knock that down I shall make some gaskets for there and then I can put that gear in and uh, put that on and carry on building this up because I don't actually need to put the drawbar in but if I cut a decent steel if I, if I cut a decent thread with that tip I'm going to crack on and just cut one on the drawbar I've found, I've found some uh, UNC is something that I haven't got much of because all the areas of engineering that I've been involved in haven't really involved UNC uh, and I've got quite a lot of tooling that I find out now uh, that's got UNC threads on it and it seems like the uh, this has got a lot of UNC threads on it although I, I believe Harrison were a bit notorious for using all sorts of different threads but these fixings for the uh, for the vertical head here are UNC Allen screws and I had to order some and I've, I've got those ages ago uh, ready to put it on so with any luck 
I might have a build up tomorrow and just uh, turn that turn that to fit. Isn't that ridiculous? It doesn't fit the whole. Uh, I'll turn that to fit and uh, get some gaskets and we'll have a we'll have a build up and see uh, see what what we can do with it. Right, that's it. That's Wednesday done. I've tied it up and I've made mess. Uh, so I've, I've not been all good today. I've been a bit been a bit dithery, but I've. I've tidied myself up, I've cleaned all that crap off that shelf, I've reorganised my shelves, I've taken all those extension leads down and all that crap that was on there and I'm thinking that it might be best if I put those some, somewhere else because to be honest, now that I've wired all the sockets in this workshop, I don't really use extension leads because everywhere I'm working there's a socket. You know, you can't, you can't say I haven't put enough sockets in. My God, you can't. There you go. Right, see you tomorrow, folks. Bye for now. Good morning, folks. It's Thursday, and uh, I've only just got started because I had a puncture this morning. So I had to change a wheel and tip the tyre into the tyre service to get it fixed. Uh, and uh, what happened then? Oh, I had to... Uh, I fixed the... Uh, something else on the car, the... Uh, the ventilation, the, the vent had stopped working until they let the air in for the hot air, so I fixed that and that was just stuck. Uh, so that's fixed now, and now I'm back on this. I'm going to have a go at cutting this thread on this piece of scrap, just to see if it works. Uh, as I say, I've got some gear ordered and it should be here in not too long. But I'm going to have a go at cutting this thread and see if I can get a decent thread on it. And if I can, I might have a go at that... Uh, at that new drawbar I'm making, but if not, I'm just going to reduce the diameter of that uh, peg, that uh, dowel pin, and then uh, I'm going to fit up the uh, the vertical head and see how it goes. See how we can get on with that. So I'm going to crack on with that now, and I'll bring you back when there's so much to show you. Bye for now. Look at that, people. A very nice thread. very nice thread indeed which is a miracle because that is not the correct uh, geometry for cutting threads it is 30 degrees which is what we want uh, but it's done it that's a workable thread I think I'll crack on and do the uh, draw bar right so I'll bring you back when I've done it bye for now and there we go folks it's not the prettiest thread I've ever cut but it's full thread it's a good fit, there's very little play on it. That'll do me. Thank you very much. Right. I'm going to do the rest of it now. I'll bring you back when I'm doing something else interesting. Bye now. Here you go, folks. This is for the people that say I never show any machining. Isn't it interesting? I'm going to knock this down from 7... Uh, 720... 725 to 625 uh, so that it fits nicely so that it's clear inside the tube in the back of the mill and then there's a portion on this end which is uh, a little bit larger just the seats in the in the end of the head and then I've got to cobble together a nut like that with a washer on it so that it's self extracted so that's what I'm doing at the moment. So there you go. Actual machining. Actual swarf coming off. Look at that. Catch you later. Well there we are folks. Thursday, five o'clock. I'm off home. I've got a thread, I've got a draw bar. I've just got the nut to make for the top and to put on there and uh, I don't know what I shall do. Maybe I could weld it on. I could bang a couple of roll pins through it, but I need to turn up a nut like that next to fit onto there, which should be an easy peasy job. And there's the thread. It's not half bad, it's it's a bit ragged. It's a bit ragged, but it fits really well, so I'm not complaining. It'll do. It fits the it fits the uh, I've got a I, I managed to find the UNC nut and bolt. 
and it fits the UNC nut really well and it fits the uh, spur gear for the milling machine really well so that's all you can ask for really isn't it right I'm going to go on for some tea and I'll see you all tomorrow bye for now good morning people it's Friday and I've just realised that I forgot to start recording so I found a piece of metal to make the uh, end with I've got it turned to the roughly to the diameters because it's actually slightly undersized but it doesn't matter uh, the the ring is the right size and that's the main thing uh, and I'm about to about to bore it to three quarters uh, and then we'll cut it off and uh, we're gonna have to put two flats in it with the milling machine which means setting up the uh, I suppose, uh, it's hard to hard to hold in the shaper hard to hold in the shaper difficult job to hold in the shaper yeah yeah it needs two flats milling on it so I'll think about that when I come to it but at the moment I'm going to bore it get it parted off and get it welded onto the bar and then we'll see about milling some flats on it okay so that's Friday going ahead I've got the heating on it's lovely and warm in here and uh, the weather's not turned out too bad actually I got my uh, punctured tyre repaired and put back on today so that was good except the bill wasn't, but never mind, that's what things cost nowadays. Alright, I'll see you later. Bye for now. Folks, lots of swarf later, and we have a reasonable facsimile of the original one. Uh, just have to weld that up, or braze it up, I'm not sure which I'm going to do. But now, it's time to clean the lathe down, and have a brew. Right, look at the state of this lathe, look at the swarf, this is because really I've started with, uh, I've started with metal that's been all I've got but it's really been too big for the job and I've just knocked it down to size, you know, it's, uh, I really should have uh, got some more steel, but steel is really expensive when you go and buy a small bit nowadays. Right, bring you back later and show you some more. Well that's it for the, this week folks, I haven't got anything more done to this. I think what I'll do with that maybe is set my brazing hearth up and just fill it with brass because... Oh I could just weld it round the top couldn't I? I'll have a look on Monday and see. If I can get those, if I can get those flats machined onto there and still leave myself a reasonable wall thickness because I've cocked up here a bit I should have left it I shouldn't have drilled it out so much I should have, should have reduced the diameter there but I could fill it with bronze I can fill it with braze but if I have a decent wall thickness when I've measured on there on Monday then I shall just uh, weld it round the top turn it smooth and then uh, that's the job done that's the job done. Machine two flats on it. Right, what I have done after I finished with that was I started to clean the lathe down, which of course I got carried away with as I always do. And we've got now we've got a nice clean lathe. Right, so that's alright, and that's a that's a nice oily cloth that was covered in coolant, but is now the water's evaporating and just after you So as a last job I took on a severe intellectual challenge. This is a Memlite machine light. There's the reflector that goes onto there. But when I got this, it was very rusty and nasty, and I had to strip it down and paint it. So I stripped it down and painted all the parts, and then of course I was left with, even though I put it mostly, put the parts mostly back together, I was left with. An intellectual challenge as to where all the thrust washers and the little bracket stops and these little pieces go to get it back together and I think I've just about got it it looks right the, the real puzzle was this bracket here this little bracket here which I couldn't think of where it fitted and of course it just stops the uh, the lamp being turned round and round and round until it twists the flex off, it's the lamp stuff. So 
I finally got it all back together. So that's something. Now what I was going to do with that, because I've got, this is actually off the lathe, right? It was mounted up here and it was on the lathe. Because I've got such superb light over here now, it makes the milling machine appear like it's in a dark corner. And the milling machine has got the lower light on it. So I can put that onto there and end up with a proper milling machine light. Anyway, that's the idea. So that's for next week. So next week we're going to assemble this and turn it into a vertical milling machine after I've machined down that little peg there which needs, needs reducing ridiculously. Uh, you would never imagine that they would change the size of a peg uh, between an imperial machine and a metric machine but there you go that's what they've done uh, but I'll get that done we'll assemble that next week and we'll have a play okay folks thanks for watching thanks for subscribing I've got more new subscribers this week so send me a like please subscribe send me a comment tell me if you think I'm an idiot right that's it we're closing down for the week. Bye-bye now.